on attachments. Life is always a set of pleasant and unpleasant events. It is your awareness that can give it a pleasant direction, a hilarious mood. It all depends on your awareness. In tomorrow's session, I will speak on certain other things as well that concerns human life. Interestingly, you have never pondered why a pregnancy takes place in nine months normally. There are nine planets. What is the connection between nine planets and nine months of pregnancy? Each planet associates itself with one month of pregnancy and each planet has its basic element that helps to correct the problems relating to that. Sometimes you notice a person gets abortion every time in the third month of pregnancy. We look at the cause of this medically, but you have to see the cause beyond the dimension of the known as well. If it is third month, which planet it connects to and what is the element by bringing that element into your life dimension corrects that problem. I'll speak on these aspects as well. What is an attachment? Attachment is the food for the mind to continue the life. And non-attachment is witnessing. And witnessing is the way to stop the stampede of the mind and through witnessing there is no effort needed to stop the clinging to the mind and when you start enjoying those blissful moments your capacity to retain them for a longer period arises those blissful moments out of attachment many things arise and these create stagnancy in life. Everything is a flow, life is a flow, river is a flow. If river begins, stops flowing, it becomes stagnant and then the water that is accumulated is not moving no new water is coming in and the circulation of the water is not there. It will begin to dry and not only that, it will begin to breed in many other insects and it will begin to stink. When water becomes stagnant and sooner or later it will stink start stinking. A person who does not flow becomes like a stagnant pool. A stagnant pool. We live in the state of duality, good and bad, right and wrong. This is how we go on comparing. This duality that becomes the way of our operation is the creation of the mind. These are created by clinging and attaching to the mind. When there is no attachment, the duality cannot be there. Remember one day you are going to disappear on the funeral pyre, just into nothingness. When you have a candle lit in your hand and all of a sudden you blow, the candle is off. Where does its flame go? And when you unlit candle and light it, where does the flame come from? It always exists there, unknown to you. 
When someone asks Buddha, where would you go after you die? He said, where do I have to go? There is nowhere to go and nowhere to come from. In the moment of birth, I become visible. And in the moment of death, I become invisible. That applies to everyone. Meditation in a way is death. You start your meditation in a waking state. You know you are sitting down in meditation and next to you is this one sitting, so on and so forth. The shake is sitting in front. But when meditation begins, your eyes close, the energy begins to flow. At that time, if anyone gets up and goes from there, you will not know. You become oblivious of the presence of the other thing. You are by yourself alone and nothing else exists. This becomes a state of non-attachment. When life comes in, you become visible and when life is disappearing, you just disappear into nothingness like a smoke. Therefore, there is no need to get attached to anything. You can live and enjoy the fruits. One of the scriptural injunctions, Isha Upanishad says, Isha Vasyamidam Sarvam. That which is, Isha is not the name of God. Isha means that which is all pervading, omnipresent, omnipotent, and that you can call as light, that you can call as consciousness, that always exists. It exists in the beginning, it exists now. It will exist when there will be nothing. Mirza Ghali with one of the compositions, he says, when there was nothing, God was there. When there is everything, God is there. Again, when there will be nothing, God will be. You can give that which exists beyond time and space any name according to your own understanding. But that does not make any difference. It is known by its quality. We try to keep the images of the person in the house and start worshipping it. This is the image, a photograph that you keep that is known as Chitra the image. What is more important is the charitra, the character, the quality of the person, not the image of the person. If you start associating with the qualities of the person, then the process of transformation begins. And that is the whole process of living in a moment when there is no attachment. When mind creates a duality, attachment comes in and you move away from the real being, the reality that you are light. Light is a positive assertion. And then you become focused on the thing to which you are attached. When you are attached, the awareness gets lost in various things that you can get that mind, that man, the mind can get attached to things, money, people, power, etc. And this creates a whole thick of forest around you and it becomes difficult. But once you are lost into it, it becomes difficult. And when you are not attached to this, you are going with him that is the way of discovering your essential nature or real face that you were born with, that existed before you was born and that will exist after you leave this world. Then awareness can turn inward, 
because you do not have anything outside to catch hold of it. It is free and in this freedom you can know what is the self-nature that you are made out of life. You are energy. Certain places when you go, the energy field is very strong. This energy field can be similar to radioactive energy. It has capacity to transform many. Certain places when you go, for instance the shrines, the radioactive element is very, energy is very, very high and sometimes it becomes very difficult to absorb this unless you are prepared for it. That is why it is important to remember this always that your self nature is that of light, is that of awareness then you do not get much attached to that which is accidental. It is by accident I and you meet along the path. We are travelers. It is along the path by accident you met your spouse, children. You are given a certain job, certain responsibility to take care of certain things. All these things are accidental, guided by your own awareness and your past understanding. Remember everything is accidental except your consciousness, except your awareness, all is accidental. If you enjoy the fruits, which I had mentioned that this particular injunction of Isha Upanishad says, Isha Vasimidam Sarvam, that permeates through the entire cosmos. That light, that awareness, that understanding permeates through everything sentient or insentient that we see around us. If you understand this, then you can enjoy the fruits of all that is there. You can enjoy the sunlight, the breeze, the rainfall, the snowfall, whatsoever it is. You can enjoy as if everything has been given to you. Many times masters have said that I am giving you this. It's not that the master is giving. It is a way of saying things because that which is cannot be put into the words. The basic understanding is never consider these things as yours. Consider these things as if it has been given to you for a certain period of time. You have the credit card. You have been given a position of the room in a particular hotel where you are staying. You are given a space on the dining table for a certain period of time. It does not belong to you, but you can enjoy as long as you have the credit card. When you park your car by the metered post, you have a freedom. You have been given an opportunity to keep the car for a desired period of time for which you had gotten the credit or you have paid for. And then when the time is over, you do not remain attached to it and you disappear, move from there. The room where you are staying today, someone else had stayed there before. And tomorrow someone else will stay there. This is an understanding. Remember everything is accidental. By way of the fact that you can afford to pay for this particular property, you are staying there. You will stay there as long as you are continuing to pay for the use of that facility. And then one day you have to leave that. Remember, everything is accidental except your consciousness, except your awareness. Pain and pleasure, success and failure, fame and defamation, meeting the people is all accidental. 
what is permanent and what never changes is your witnessing consciousness stick to it it is the consciousness that has brought us into the company of one another and we are together traveling along the path and one day when the journey is over we have reached our destinations this will disappear get more and more rooted in this and do not spread your attachment to the worldly things these are the things which try to create attachments although i have spoken on this in previous session but yet still there are certain dimensions which needed to be put into it that creates attachment in various forms anything fear lust greed anger you can get attached to it so never allow this to happen in you or this particular clinging that all the time you get angry for one thing or the other do not cling do not allow this to grow because this will take away your freedom to soar high in the sky to soar in an unknown realm all the miseries all that happens in life which becomes unpleasant is the outcome of this clinging to the mind clinging to the objects and beings you can enjoy the fruits if you understand that this is the one that spreads the entire cosmos this is the beginning of the spiritual journey that there is light there is awareness that is spreads if you consider god as a person that his presence may not be omnipresence but if you consider it as light as awareness it can be present everywhere and it is present everywhere it permeates through the entire cosmos seeing a flower something begins to trigger in you you are remembered of the quality of quality of something beauty is the manifestation of inner joy of the flower when your inner joy begins to spurt you become an embodiment of beauty so it is an expression of the inner not the expression that is given to you by the beauty parlors the absence of this creates ignorance and darkness which is a strange combination of a thousand and one things that we get attached to we are attached to things that will be taken away from us at the time of death or even before you may be very much attached to money but you can go bankrupt tomorrow money is the most movable commodity it never stays in one place in the same way you earn money you bring it you next moment you go to the shop you give it to the person in exchange for the goods and services that you need he exchanges it for someone else some other facility that he needs this process goes on so you can never remain attached to it you can never possess the money you can take the example a particular denomination of the bill comes in your hand bearing a particular number it goes to you comes to you from you it goes to someone else and it continues to travel from hand to hand it can never remain in one hand if you try 
too much to change the outside that you want to change this one or that one it is not possible things change only when an inner process begins and if you try to stick and try to bring the change outwardly then you are attached if a man tries to be if you ever try to be detached that means somewhere deep with deep down you are attached to something if you are not attached then there is no question of detaching yourself you are natural if you escape from a woman it shows that you still deep down there is an obsession that's why you want to get rid of it otherwise there is no need of escaping and the awareness means you are living moment to moment the moment has come a particular person has come the breakfast platter is on the table you are enjoying that platter whatever is there on the platter can give you the fulfillment can fulfill your need for the physical body but you cannot remain attached to it when there is a past which was unlived and gets accumulated uh, accumulated it becomes attachment if you are living your life moment to moment then nothing accumulates and then you are fresh young and just born every moment is now you remember life is a flow if there is not flow there will be stagnancy you cannot enter the same river twice this is a famous statement of heraclitus you cannot enter the same river twice this statement is an statement of the man of awareness in the moment of awareness he makes this statement but an ignorant one can say i go to the same beach again and again but nothing remains static except the mind it continues to hover in the dead past which are never there when people are in a state of quarrel with one another they try to bring forward all that moments which are never there except in the memory you did not do this last time you acted that way last time everything last time but now is the important thing i am trying to correct that and you are living in the past we cannot remain unattached to the unlived past the water continues to flow between the river bed on the river bed between the two shores and when it is continuously flowing that you cannot enter the same river twice if you introspect on these words that is more than enough to bring about a transformation in your life a moment gone never returns a moment gone never returns if you live in that moment then you gather the bliss of that moment and when all these moments the bliss generated out of these moments is gathered is accumulated life begins to transform you become fresh young and just born when you look within there is no age because inside nothing changes change takes place on the periphery you was once a child a baby a child then you become a young boy then you go through various stages but deep within if you look into there remains the same and that is why it is called that immortal you are immortal but you remain unaware of the fact that there is something that does not change that which does not change within is your action all changes takes place on the periphery the wheel moves on an axle 
Without the axle, the wheel cannot move. The wheel covers the distance, but the axle remains fixed. It supports the wheel. It allows the wheel to revolve on its own. And when all the four wheels of the vehicle, they move in their own space, on their own axle. That is why the entire cosmos is a constant movement. The sun moves on its axle, the earth moves on its axle, and then they continue to revolve around one another. It is a dual process, it's continuing to move on its own ac axle, and then it continues. So if you look at it, each wheel is moving on its own axle and at the same time, together they are moving on the road to cover a certain distance in a specific period of time. This is the planetary movement and because of that, time and many other factors are determined. The whole secret of being non-attached lies in living in this world, but be not of the world. I cannot own the plane that I am traveling for a certain period of time. I cannot own the seat. I paid for that seat for a specific period of time during, in the duration of the journey. No one can occupy that seat during that duration. But after that I have no right over it. So you are in this world. All the wise say that the world is like a vast guest house where we come to spend our time. You look at the stage play. The stage is set. The lights are there, the props are there, everything keeps on changing from scene to scene. One act is enacted and it is enacted by a certain set of actors and actresses. After that particular scene, the actors, actresses, the prop, the lights, the decor, everything changes. You are on this stage, but only for that period of time when you have to enact your scene. After that, you are not on that stage. You are behind the stage. And when this kind of understanding comes, <coughs> there can never be attachment. You are given a particular outfit to wear during that performance. After that, it is taken. You are given a set of dialogues to speak and after the scene is over, the dialogues, you have spoken, do not belong to you. You don't need them. Reflect people. Also reflect the beauties of the world. There are myriads all around. But never cling. In clinging, the mind loses its mirror quality. Mind supposed to be sharp like a mirror with clean surface. It should be able to reflect all that comes in your presence, but it cannot make a judgment. The moment mirror begins to make a judgment, it becomes the mind. And the moment mind witnesses everything but never makes a judgment, mind becomes a mirror. This mirror-like quality to develop is the essence of the spiritual journey. And this mirror-like quality is Christhood, Buddhahood, awakening, or whatsoever you may call it. To keep that quality of mirroring continuously fresh is to remain young, pure, innocent, aware and spiritual. No, but do not create knowledge. Love, but do not create desire. Live beautifully and totally, but abandon yourself in the moment. Never look back. 
This is the essence of living moment to moment, non-attached to the mind. The world is ephemeral, short-lived. The moment that comes is never repeated. And when you are unaware, you are thinking of the past, you are thinking of the dish that you have eaten in the restaurant last time. In the last restaurant you visited, you will miss the opportunity of enjoying that which is in front of you. A simple exercise you can do when you are eating food. The platter is in front of you, full of delicious food, if you are accustomed eating the warm food, instead of when food gets cold and steamy. Then if you go into the process of thinking, the food will become cold and steamy, and its taste will be lost somewhat. And you Take a morsel in your mouth, you remain engaged in talking and observe what is there in your hand. Your hand is either working on a next morsel or it has already picked up the next morsel as soon as the one finishes. The hand is with. through the hand, you are waiting for that morsel to finish and you put the next morsel into the mouth. Moment to moment means that which is in your mouth has to be enjoyed first before you take the other morsel. In that begins the whole process of digestion. And this is a spiritual dimension. Everything has a spiritual dimension and that comes only if there is awareness. If there is no awareness, life becomes worldly. With awareness, Available to the moment, any worldly thing, worldly occasion, worldly moments becomes a spiritual, becomes a door to the beyond. And sometimes we consider that if you want to be unat unattached to a particular thing, you have to renounce the world. You do not need to renounce the world. Just if you are available to the moment, the attachment will not come to you. You know that this has been given to you as a gift for a certain period of time. Just as the seat was given to you in the plane when you book your ticket, that duration, for the duration of this journey, the seat belongs to you. It has been given to you by virtue of the credit that you have given. Your good deeds, your understanding, your awareness creates the credit for you for a certain things given to you at a certain period of time. And then it will be taken away one day. And when this understanding remains in you moment to moment, how can there be attachment? You will sit down on that seat, but do you ever say that I have paid for this seat, I have to take it back with me? And even if you happen to take it back with you, you cannot use that. That seat is relevant only in its totality. When it is part of the seating arrangement of a particular plane, or that configuration, it has its beauty. You take it away from there, it will not be. The flower has petals, pollen, and all these things put together that makes it a flower that becomes a storehouse of beauty and fragrance. You take out the petals one by one, they can never be a flower. And once you take it out, you can never put them together to make it a, a live flower, a living organism. Living organism means the totality of all that is there in its natural essence. If you 
remove this is what the scientists do they remove the petals they remove the pollen neither the flower is there nor the fragrance then they can create the artificial color and artificial fragrance but that will not have the beauty of the aliveness of the flower in the same way you can enjoy the fruits if you understand the nature of it there is no need to renounce what is the point of renouncing if you are not attached to it the only thing is this that you have to focus on renouncing is your attachment to it that this seed has been given to me for a specific period of time the platter of the food that comes to you it has been given to you as a container to serve you with the meals during that flight after that it will be taken away from you irrespective of its beauty irrespective of how nice it is looking or you are captivated by the way the food was decorated if you remain with that then you cannot enjoy the the platter that is in front of you but you can register the way the platter was set and you can replicate that that's a different aspect that is you are bringing that quality into you into your life but you enjoy the fruits and you also remember how good or the beautiful the platter is you cannot take away with you you have to leave it there when you are exiting the plane how can when this is an understanding in you when it comes to life moment to moment how can there be attachment you know it has been given to you for a specific time to use then you do not need to renounce attachment this very understanding that this particular seat this particular facility the blanket the pillow all these things were given to you for a specific period of time then there is no question of renounce renouncing it just by seeing this particular fact that this is the way the life is just seeing the ugliness of being attached it disappears and something arises in you and that which arises in you is love for tremendous love for the existence that it has enriched you with its various qualities and the same energy which could have become in the absence of awareness attachment now with awareness it has become love it is a totally different kind of energy which is non possessive and invigorating it continues to fuel your life to continue the journey until you reach the state when the drop merges in the ocean and remember mirza galib says ishrate katra hadriya me fana hona he uses the word which cannot be replaced by any other when drop merges in it in the ocean it is not its it is not a burden for it instead it is its joy of fulfillment it's not out of compulsion the drop has to merge into the ocean no one forces the drop to merge into the ocean instead out of its own joy out of its own free will it merges into the ocean इशरत कतरा है दरिया में फना होना इशरत कतरा है 
phenomena and this state of annihilation is my own freedom, my own free will. No one has forced it into, onto me. Instead, it is part of the continuous journey. I am aware of it. Then, out of tremendous love, a different kind of non possessive energy begins to generate in you.